This is my Kubota BX1880. It's the smallest tractor Kubota offers with a loader. And it's also the most affordable tractor offered with a loader from Kubota. This is similar to a John Deere 1 Series tractor. And I've had about 30 hours of use on the loader. This tractor was purchased just to do some light chores around uh, my house. I don't have plans to mow with it. So all 30 hours on this tractor are hours using the loader. And now that I have that much time on it, I think I can make an honest review of what I think about this machine. Before this tractor, I had a John Deere 2320 and I've operated uh, a bunch of other tractors too for work or through friends. And one thing I will say about this size tractor and the type of chores that I'm doing, which is mostly just maintenance around uh, my property, is that the BX is much more nimble and easy to operate compared to the John Deere 2000 series I had before this. It is limited, however, in its capacity because of the size of the tractor. And I have never ran out of horsepower, but I have ran out of weight. If you plan to buy a BX tractor just for the loader, then the 1880 is a good value because this saves a few thousand dollars off the price of the next size up tractor. But you get all the same benefits. This does have a smaller size wheel and tire compared to the bigger BX series tractors. There is no tilt wheel and it just has a standard seat compared to the deluxe tractor that the larger BX series tractors have. But in the 32 hours I've had to operate this machine, the seat and the steering wheel have been more than adequate. It's a very com comfortable tractor. The ergonomics are very good. A couple things that I think could have been done a little bit better would be some of the control layouts. The joystick for the loader is fantastic. This is very good. However, in a small tractor like this, when you're using the loader, it's advantageous to switch between the high range and low range on the hydro. Unfortunately, with this Kubota, it's a pretty long throw on the lever to go from low range to neutral to high range. And I know when the tractor's off, this doesn't seem like it's a large deal. However, going between the two ranges as the tractor is stopped and the engine is running is actually a little bit more difficult than I uh, would have expected. So what I find myself doing is spending more time in the low range to do work that I would rather be in the high range for. Because in the high range, uh, you lose quite a bit of power. Also along those same lines, the four wheel drive lever is very good. However, like right here, without the tractor moving, if the gears aren't meshed up, you aren't able to put this into four wheel drive. That's common on all tractors. However, it seems like this is much more touchy to engage and disengage four wheel drive compared to other machines I've operated. Not just the 2000 series gear I had before this, but a bunch of other compact tractors I've used. So these two things here are um, something I've gotten used to. However, it was one surprise I had. Uh, the lever throw and the synchronization between four wheel drive and two wheel drive. The rear PTO has an inching lever as compared to a lever with uh, different levels. So this lever, to go up and down, you have a neutral and you have an up and you have a down position. This isn't like a bigger tractor where you set the lever at a certain height and then the PTO will follow it. This is an inching lever. So if you need to go up a little bit, or if you have to go down a little bit, 
instead of just picking a height and letting it go. But it hasn't been an issue so far because all I've done with the rear PTO uh, three point is to pick up trailers and move them around. So it worked for that purpose, it works well. However, if you were doing a lot of work with a box blade and you wanted to come back to the same height, it would be not as easy with this type of a lever. But with this size of a tractor, most people won't be doing a lot of rear implements with uh, box blades and uh, discs and such. I have a couple chores to do around the house here today, so I'll film that so you can get an idea of what the tractor sounds like and how it operates. But I'll go ahead and start it, just see what it's like. 37 hours. It's already a little bit warm. Being that this is a small three-cylinder diesel engine, it does smoke a little bit when it starts, especially when it's cold. There is no diesel particulate filter. So at least with the soot coming out, you know you don't have to worry about any type of emissions or anything like that. Before I do a couple chores around here, one other thing I'd like to say with the size of a tractor is you have to be aware of the capabilities of the loader itself. And what I mean by that is the loader itself is very strong. Even though there's just the one tilt hydraulic cylinder in the middle of the loader, this has enough power to pick the rear of the tractor up. And you have to watch. I found myself trying to get this to move rocks that were too heavy for the machine itself but we're within the capabilities of the loader. Adding weight to the rear of the tractor would have helped that. However, adding weight to the rear of the tractor, uh, it might make it a little less stable depending on the type of terrain you're working on. Also, if you're moving material that's so heavy for the tractor, you need a bunch of extra ballast in the back, you might be pushing the limits of the tractor itself. I elected to keep weight off the back of the tractor and just use the loader as it is. And if I'm getting into something where I'm overloading the tractor and picking up the rear tires, I know I need to take a smaller scoop or maybe drag whatever I'm trying to pick up instead of picking it up. I did some landscaping projects around the house this year and I was moving some big barn stones that probably weighed around six or 700 pounds each. That was about as much as I'd want to put on the front of the tractor. Overall, I'm very happy with it. I'll make a quick video here of me doing a couple chores. I need to uh, take care of this brush here in the corner of the property. It got uh, really overgrown and I'd like to seed it for grass next fall. So I have to take care of all this junk that moved in. And those are typically the type of projects I've done with this so far. And depending on how that goes, I might go in the woods and work on some trails too. If you have any questions about this tractor or are thinking about purchasing one and would like to know what I think about it, uh, besides this video, uh, don't hesitate to ask. And thanks for watching.